My name is Conrad Steiner. I'm a doctor of medicine. Tonight's story has the title, Physician, Heal Thyself. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. To the profession of medicine, to the men and women who labor in its cause, this story is dedicated. Medic, a presentation of the Dow Chemical Company. Producer of chemicals for industry and agriculture. Magnesium, the lightweight metal from the sea, and plastics you use every day in your home. Millions of women have found Saran Wrap the most convenient food wrap they've ever used. Even this new box is scientifically designed for your convenience. First, punch out both these tabs. And carefully follow the instructions you'll see printed on the inside flap. Next step is to remove the roll from the box. Unwind a length of saran wrap from the roll. And then simply put the roll back in the box and replace the cover inside like this. Pull out, tear down slowly, and next time you'll find the end of saran wrap waiting right here, ready to save you kitchen time in three important ways. First, in preparing food, saran wrap saves time by letting you prepare many dishes long before the dinner hour rush. Moisture-proof saran wrap keeps food fresh until you're ready to serve it. Again, in wrapping food, saran wrap saves time because it quickly clings to any shape, forms a neat space-saving package that needs no strings, no rubber bands to hold it together. You just smooth it into place, it clings by itself. And finally, in storing foods too, crystal clear saran wrap saves time by making foods easy to find. No time wasted searching for the food you want. And of course, you can use a saran wrap bowl cover again and again. For economy and all-around usefulness in every room in the house, pick up a box or two of convenient, time-saving saran wrap tomorrow. Saran wrap is sold in food stores throughout the United States and Canada. Our presentation tonight, the field of physiology, scientific study of tuberculosis. The object in point, a roll of celluloid. Case in point, Jerome R. Colton, M.D., age 33, married, two children. A resident in internal medicine, Jerome Colton has just four months of duty at the hospital remaining before he opens his own office. But there's one thing standing in his way, a short, rod-shaped, acid-fast microorganism. It could kill him. Frederick Salverson Marzani, discharged tomorrow morning. Calling Dr. Colton. Calling Dr. Colton. Dr. Colton. Radiology? All right, put him on. Hello, Ben. Jerry Colton. What? Well, I was on my way to the wards. All right, I'll come down. Anybody calls, I'm going to Bermuda back in an hour. Hi, doctor. Anyone for tennis? Young Dr. Radford, medical athlete. Two quick cents, how about it? Sorry, Dave. Wendy wants to see me down an extra. You know what it's about? No idea. Why? Oh, he wants to see me, too. And that creates a serious conflict. I want to get in a couple of cents before dark. Maybe you can handle it for both of us, huh? Okay. See what I can do. Hey, doctor. Pow! Wanted to see me, doctor. Oh, hello, Jerry. Sit down a minute, will you? I'd like to show you something. How's it going? Working pretty hard? Oh, the usual. 26 hours a day. Seems like the closer you come to the end of it, the more work there is. Uh-huh. These are last week's minis. Semi-annual physical for hospital personnel. Chest here, I want you to see. What do you make of it? 
Looks like an infiltration in the right upper lobe. What's an infiltration like that mean to you? Always suggestive of TB, probably active. Why'd you want me to see the film? Somebody on the ward? It's you. You must have the wrong frame. I double checked. It's not going to go away, Jerry. Well, it doesn't have to mean an infiltration. It might be an artifact. Excess silver nitrate deposit. Or faulty grain in the film. Possible. But you don't think so? No, I don't. I think you've got TB, Jerry. Dave Radford said you wanted to see him, too. He asked me to find out about it. Is it the same thing? I'll talk about that with Dave. But it could be almost anything. The virus pneumonia, pulmonary fibrosis. That's why you ought to have a large chest film made. Get Dr. Gers back to take a look at it. He's in the hospital today. I can have the film ready for him before he leaves. Excuse me, doctor. Got some work to do. Sorry, not in this hospital. I have to report what I find, Jerry. Your mini film suggested of moderately advanced tuberculosis, probably active. So I'm washed out. For the time being, yes. Your residency is suspended, pending final diagnosis. I'm sorry, honey. It was a last-minute emergency. Kids asleep? Thank goodness. Should have heard Mike beefing about having to go to bed without saying goodnight to Daddy. He said that this is a sample of doctor's hours. He's going back to cattle rustling. I don't blame him. <laughs> Our little nurse is still with us, though. Ann said to be sure you saw the repair job she did on this fractured tibia today. You better wash up now. I'll go see if there's any dinner left unburned. That's wonderful. I couldn't resist getting it. After all, you'll be putting it on your door in only 97 days. Oh, by the way, the real estate agent dropped in with the office leases. We can look them over tonight, if I ever get us through this meal. I'll get it. Well, Dave, come in. Greetings, fellow victim. How does it feel to be kicked in the face with the lousiest diagnosis ever made in the field of medicine? Where'd you hear about it? Wonder he gave me the same kind of double talk you got. Only, he threw in a bonus with mine. Moderately advanced TB with a cavity. Sorry, Dave. For what? Ben Wendry can't see beyond the end of his photo rent cut unit. You gonna let him get away with his TB diagnosis? You any other suggestions? Uh, you know what we've got as well as I do. Virus pneumonia. Can't be anything else. Wards are full of it this time of year. We've all been exposed to it time and time again. TB. When we get it cleaned up, we'll go to the board. We'll burn their ears off about this. You gonna try treating yourself? What's the matter with you, Jerry? Are you gonna let them yank six weeks out of your life while you molder away in a sanatorium, waiting for the results of a gastric, and just because Wendry can't tell the difference between a TB lesion and a pneumonia? Jerry. What's he saying? What about TB? I'm sorry, I thought maybe she knew. I'll check you later, Jerry. 
Talk to him, Marvin. Maybe you can make him see the light. The minifilms on my last physical. An infiltration showed up, and the chest film confirmed it. And you have tuberculosis? Not necessarily. Could be a lot of things. Pneumonia, pulmonary abscess, fungus infection, fibrosis. Could be any one of them. But how can they tell? How can they be sure? See if they can find the bug. I'm not raising any sputum. They'd have to make a gastric culture. Double check it by animal inoculation. What does that mean? Sanatorium. I'd have to stay anywhere from four to eight weeks until they got the results. I don't understand it. You're a doctor. You have no symptoms. You're not coughing. You haven't been around the TB wards recently. It doesn't make any difference. Down at the hospital, we see hundreds of people every week. Any one of them could have active tuberculosis without symptoms in the early stages. They could pass it on. You said you'd have to go to the sanatorium. When? Tonight. Tonight? Why do you think I waited until the kids were asleep before I came home? Why do you think I wouldn't kiss you hello? Until this thing is checked out, I can't take any chances. Tonight. Well, if that's how it is, doctor, You'd better get into the kitchen and grab yourself a bite to eat. I'll get somebody to stay with the kids. The one inescapable evidence of active pulmonary tuberculosis is the isolation of virulent tubercle bacilli. In cases like that of Jerry Colton, where no sputum is being raised, the examination of gastric contents for the bacilli is essential. A sample of the gastric contents is aspirated and sent to the laboratory for culture and guinea pig inoculation. In four to eight weeks, the animal is examined for evidence of tuberculosis. A positive reaction is definite indication of the presence of the tubercle bacillus. Good morning, Jerry. You have the results of the gastric? We have it. All right, doctor. What's the prescribed therapy? You want to stay at the sanatorium? I have a choice. Of course. We can't force you to stay. You're free to walk out right now if you like. I'm not free to do anything. Just sit here and rot for two or three years. You're a physician, Jerry. What's your prescription? Complete bed rest. Immediate chemotherapy. I'll give the instructions. X-rays and tuberculin test reports on you and the children were absolutely negative, Mrs. Colton. And what about Jerry, doctor? How bad is he? Well, I imagine the simplest way to explain it is with the uh, X-rays themselves. If you would just step over there, please. You can sit on the stool if you like, Mrs. Colton. See these areas here and here? They show definite evidence of disease. It looks rather critical. Is it? It would be if it continued. But thanks to the routine chest examination, it was caught relatively early. How much difference does that make? He still has TB. Some years ago, it uh, might have made very little difference. This is Florida, or galloping consumption didn't always gallop. 
In a high percentage of cases, it would end in terminal tuberculosis, possibly after years of wasting away in some sanatorium. We still don't have a magic bullet to kill the TB bug, but we do have some very powerful ammunition. What? Streptomycin for one, and PAS. Now, with the use of these for chemotherapy and the necessary bed rest, in a case like Jerry's, we expect good results, generally within a year. And Jerry could be cured within a year. We like to call it that among ourselves, but for purposes of clinical classification, we'll say that he could be a, an inactive case. A good deal is going to depend on Jerry himself. How will it depend on him? It's not easy to be a TB patient. It requires a radical reorientation, physically and emotionally. In effect, he's got to return to the private world of an infant. Rest, complete rest, is the keystone in the treatment of TB. For six months, not even his foot is allowed to touch the floor. He's fed a high-protein, high-calorie diet. He's not going to like it. He's given the prescribed medication. His every physical need is attended to. But unlike the infant, he's not allowed the luxury of emotional outbursts, of physical movement. He has only his adult mind, his maturity, his hope and faith, to sustain him during the long, tedious days. If those fail him, prognosis for recovery may well be unfavorable. Jerry's taking it pretty hard. Of course. It's fighting everything he is. He's a doctor. He wants to care for others. He wants to be the healer, not the helpless one. Well, there's a vast psychological difference between the two. Jerry must come to understand that and adapt himself to the change if we're going to get results. How can you expect that of him, Doctor? He's been a dedicated person. It'll kill him to be like this. That's the real battle we have to face here, Mrs. Colton. Not the one with the TB bug. It's the battle with Jerry himself. That's the one I'm worried about. So am I. How's it going today, Jerry? Same as any other. Any toxic reaction from the chemotherapy? I haven't noticed a reaction to anything. Well, it obviously hasn't stimulated your appetite. You're not eating enough, Jerry. We have to put some weight on you. What about that last gastric? Have you got a report on it yet? Came in this morning. Still positive. Oh. Only 60 days of treatment, Jerry. 60 or 600, what's the difference? You tell me, Doctor, what's the difference? None. Unless you want to live. Is this living? The kids, they've really been pretty spectacular lately. Yeah. Mike's the most wonderful helper. No more coaxing him to wash the dishes. Makes his own bed, too. You'd really be proud of him. Would you like me to be quiet? Or just go? I was thinking about Dave Radford. You haven't heard anything from him lately, have you? No, I haven't. I've talked with some of the boys down at the hospital off and on, but apparently they haven't heard from him either. A free man. I wonder what it feels like walking around out there. I wonder how he's coming along with his tennis game. I'll be back tomorrow, Jerry. Sanatorium, one year, maybe two. The sanatorium, rest, 
two years, maybe three. Complete rest, Jerry. Three years, maybe four. Rest, Jerry. The sanatorium. Four years, maybe five. Complete rest, Jerry. Complete rest. 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 Five years, maybe six. Rest. 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 Dr. Colton. The patient you just brought in. It's Dr. Radford. Come on, doctor. I'll help you back to bed. It's Dr. Radford. He's hemorrhaging. What happened? You can't break your rest, doctor. You have to get back to bed. Look, Dave's a friend of mine. We were residents together. What happened? I don't know the details. I understand he collapsed about an hour ago. Dr. Gersbach phoned and said to admit him tonight. Well, what's the story? What's his condition? His x-rays show marked advancement. He's in for a long pull. Probably means eventual surgery, a pneumonectomy. Come on, doctor, I'll help you back to your room. He was going to treat himself. Virus pneumonia. He said he was going to treat himself. Uh, Dave. Please, doctor. Because of Jerome Colton's initial resistance to treatment, it took longer in his case, 103 days from the time of admittance to the first negative gastric. But from then on, his progress was rapid. In seven months, he was semi-ambulatory. Each report on gastric culture and inoculation, negative. Each day, his strength increasing, his spirits rising. It's now exactly 14 months and 11 days since Jerome Colton was admitted to the sanatorium. Come in, Jerry. Doctor. <laughs> Big day? The biggest. Mm -hmm. I don't even mind this. Not complaining? Not a bit. What happens now? You're an internist, aren't you? That's right. Well, I'm not going to tell you that you can forget the past 14 months here. You'll never be able to do that completely. For the first few years, you'll have to keep regular hours. Get your rest, no uh, overexertion. Follow this faithfully, and for all practical purposes, you can live a normal life. And I can practice medicine? That's right. You can practice medicine. Doctor, what about Dave Radford? How's he doing? Well, there's only one lung remaining. He shows a definite lack of response to chemotherapy. Even if we can arrest the disease before it becomes terminal, 
He'll never lead a normal life. He'll always be limited. Limited? How much does that take in? Quite a bit. I think he's through. I don't think he'll ever work again. So you're gonna goof off, huh? Give us the brush? That's all the thanks we get. Look, Buster, I've heard every corny story you've had to offer three times over. It's time for a change. It's time for something. Look at that pot on you. A couple of sets of tennis a day, that's what you need. The minute I get out of this settlement, it's clay courts for you, boy. Check, Buster. I'll spot you two games a set and beat the ever-loving pants off you. Listen to that. <laughs> subscript to follow. Here's that magic carpet you've dreamed about. Made of wonderful saran, it's virtually stain proof, even when ink is deliberately spilled on it. The ink can't soak in. The round, smooth saran fibers won't absorb it. Just sponge the spot with household detergent. Ink, iodine, or food wipes right up without leaving a stain or ring. The colors are so fast that bleaches won't harm them. Easy to care for saran carpeting resists the hardest kind of wear and stays springy, thick, and resilient for years. You can buy it in eight beautiful colors, including sea green, beige, cinnamon, driftwood gray, nutria, and corsage green. Even white is practical. Leading rug department and furniture stores carry this lovely saranette carpeting made of 100% saran. The medical profession is doing everything possible to eliminate tuberculosis as a major health problem. But the ultimate success of this cause depends on you. Early detection is of major importance. X-ray chest examinations are available to all of us. It takes less than half a second to make a chest picture. Little enough time to spare when it could well mean saving your life. 